the, the brain is forgetting how to be a brain. Did, is that a better life? Would you want to go back 200 years and live then? I, I don't think so. There's no better way to save trillions of dollars than to keep people healthy. Unless, and I'm hoping to do is to save the US $86 trillion. We've calculated that just... Uh, well, aging definitely changes the brain. It changes our ability to not just remember things, but perceive the world. And the aging brain is is quite a, a, an interesting thing to to work on because it's the question is what is going on with age in the brain? What is causing it to malfunction? We take it for granted that aging happens, but just because it's common doesn't mean uh, we understand it, understand it. And what we think goes on is that, is that the, the brain is forgetting how to be a brain. And what we're working on is, is ways to slow that, that loss of identity of the cells uh, and even reverse it so the cells in the brain wake up and remember how they're supposed to function. And uh, that's what we're working on mainly in the lab. Uh, but I talk to a lot of elderly or older people, as we should call them now. Um, and there are, there are two camps. There are those who are sick uh, or frail and generally are not looking forward to the future. But then there are those people who have managed to, whether it's their genes or the way they've lived, stay healthy. And then it's a completely different story. I meet people in their 80s and 90s who are just ex as excited about their daily lives as they were when they were 20 or 30. I like to look back in time as well. Let's go back to just 200 years ago when people would not generally make it in a healthy way past about 60. Uh, and you, a lot of people died earlier than that from disease. Did, is that a better life? Would you want to go back 200 years and live then? I, I don't think so. And so the same will be true in possibly within our lifetime when people can live an extra 10 or 20 years in healthy in a healthy way and they can play tennis when they're 90 or 100, then that doesn't make life less worth living. I think it, it would give us even more excitement about being alive. Let's say my, I could make you live a thousand years. I don't want to live that long, David. I'm so tired. <laughs> no, I'll give you the energy as well. And you'll be healthy and you can have different careers. You want me to live a thousand? Nobody wants me to live a thousand years. I do. You got lots more to do. You're just getting started. But if you live a thousand years, why would you want to die tomorrow? Nobody who's healthy, who has friends, wants to die tomorrow. We don't have enough resources. And you cover this in your book, so I'm not saying that I, that I stopped reading when I was shouting at it. As it is right now, we don't have enough resources. We're... We are we are killing the planet. I mean, we're we are we are hurting our planet in ways that have significant impact already. One of the pieces that I feel maybe could have gotten a little more emphasis is that many of the things that ail us are socioeconomically related, largely to access to food and nutrition. Those problems exist even if we're all living a thousand years. And you have a very beautiful analysis of what it would look like, again, this paradigm shift to say, all these things be, I mean, you made every point that I did, that I was making. And then you really do, you have a proposal for kind of what it would look like. But how do I reconcile that when there are people in the city that I live in who cannot eat or feed their children? The, the, the epidemic of mental health crisis has made it such, I mean, to, to be specific about mental health, that the people who most need access to help simply to do the basics, be employed, pay rent, feed their children, have childcare so they can work, like those things weigh on my heart. That's just the kind of person I am, right? So it's very hard for me to go to, on your experiment, your thought experiment with you. Come on this journey with me. You've got to change your view of the world, not just at the individual level or even society. You've got to think globally. What would happen 
if on average people didn't get sick until they were 90 um, or even just 80, 84. Your body shouldn't just give up. It should fight against diseases. This is what we call medicine. All I'm doing is taking a different approach to slowing down and curing diseases. And no one's ever said curing diseases is a sin. I just might be able to do it across the body rather than just put band-aids on one organ at a time. Um, and I think that's the best way to improve people's lives is instead of keeping one part of the body healthy like the heart and letting the brain age, that's cruel. Why don't we keep all parts of the body young? And that, that's what we seem to be able to do right now. There's no better way to save trillions of dollars than to keep people healthy, unless you want to stop military spending, which I doubt is going to happen anytime soon. And the, the people on the street who need help, the reason they're not getting help is because there's not enough money to go around. I'm a biologist, so that's out of my, my <laughs> jurisdiction. But what I can do, and I'm hoping to do, is to save the US $86 trillion. We've calculated that just one of the medicines that we have at our disposal, it's actually already on the market, known as metformin, would save the US over a decade $86 trillion. And if you do it for the entire lifespan of, of this generation, it would be $360 trillion. You can do a lot with that money. Well, I got friends who are economists. That's where I come <laughs> from. And they tell me this is a good thing for the planet. So we can save ourselves and in doing so, save the planet as well. So metformin is a slight chemical variant of a molecule that's found in the French lilac. So it's, it's pretty close to being a natural molecule. And it, what it does, it was found by accident, is it improves uh, and reverses type 2 diabetes, which is having high blood sugar. Uh, which we all know is bad. It leads to accelerated aging and heart disease and eventually death. So it's good to keep your blood sugar levels below what's a number, which is uh, the number five. We actually think that the reason type 2 diabetes occurs, as it does if you don't exercise and eat well and eat the right things, is because aging is happening more rapidly. So here's, here's the point. Aging is the main cause of all the major diseases that afflict us. We have to get away from the idea the type 2 diabetes is caused by X, and Alzheimer's is caused by Y, and heart disease caused by you know, P. It's not the case. These diseases don't happen to young people generally. And, and about 80% of your health in the future is dependent on how you live your life, and only 20% is what you got from your parents and your mm -hmm. DNA, Right. which is really important to know because if you think, oh, if I just, you know, if I sit around all day and watch movies and eat popcorn, I don't have to worry. Well, you're really missing an opportunity to be healthy uh, over the age of 70. And my opinion, scientific opinion, is that this is an extremely safe drug. It's not perfectly safe, so you need to ask your doctor. But it, it's one of the safest drugs in the world, and it can have huge benefits. It's been shown in multiple studies that if you look at tens of thousands of people who take metformin for their type 2 diabetes, they, on average, live longer and are healthier than people than, that never had type 2 diabetes. That's compelling. And the FDA is excited about this data and they want it to be proven by doing uh, a prospective. We know what's gonna happen if we don't do anything, right? We're all in denial, but let's just face it. If we don't do anything in 30 years, probably I'll be gone. So what's the harm in taking a pill that costs me less than a dollar a day, that's not gonna hurt me, my doctor says it's okay, but it might make me live another five or 10 years. Well, it's debated. Uh, one main mechanism that's somewhat agreed upon is that it inhibits the body's ability to make energy. And in response, the body starts to make more energy. Well, the full name, if you want to hear it, is nicotinamide mononucleotide. But it's just a small chemical that the body takes in as a vitamin and turns it into a really important chemical in the body called NAD. Well, it, Everybody should love it. Without NAD, we're all dead in 30 seconds. It's really important. It's the molecule of life. It carry out, carries out hundreds of chemical reactions in the body. But what we found is over time, the levels decline. If you measure the skin NAD levels in a 50-year-old like me, I'm 52, they would be half the levels of when I was 20, which is, is not good for metabolism and enzymatic reactions in the body. But it's also bad because NAD is required for the body to defend itself against aging. Yes, yeah, so NADH and NAD are larger molecules. 
uh, and NMN as a precursor building block. And it's small enough that uh, it does get taken up into cells. And so that's why I take NMN. We've, we've tested these side by side, which is what a good scientist should do. Uh, and so far, NMN is the winner. Uh, it's the molecule in red wine that went around the world when we discovered it was important for aging in 2003. Drink every night, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I would say because I only eat one meal a day, probably a third of my calories are alcohol at this point. We'll get to that. I hate it, but I do it occasionally. Uh, it's not its not pleasant. I mean, the, the whole idea is putting your body into a state of shock, a bit of, uh, we call it hormesis, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Right. Right.